Welcome to Indy's Real Estate Gurus. I'm Rick Ripma, your hardworking mortgage guy, and I've been in mortgages in real estate for over 34 years. My team and I believe in custom tailored loans, not the one size fits all approach. We believe there is the right mortgage for you, and we believe we are the team to deliver it. And I'm Ian Arnold, part of Rick's hardworking mortgage team. I've been in the financial industry for 15 years, helping customers rebuild their credit, get the best possible interest rate. I have a passion in helping you secure your overall real estate dreams and hopefully secure your overall financial wealth for your family. And if you have any questions on mortgages or the Indies real estate market, please go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. Or you can call 317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. Today, we have Dawn Whalen with FC Tucker on. She is a phenomenal agent. I think you're going to really enjoy her stories. And not only a phenomenal agent, you have lots of different things that you, you're interested in and that I you do. do. I do. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So before we get into what the other things that you do, what did you do before real estate? And, and like, where'd you grow up? You know, the basics. So I grew up on the southeast side of Indianapolis, um, stayed in Indianapolis, well, in that area my whole life. Um, moved to Beach Grove after I got married, raised my kids in Beach Grove, sold our childhood home in 2019. They cried. I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> my husband and I built a home in New Pal in 2019. So we're, wow. that's what we've done. Um, immediately prior to real estate, wedding photography. Really? Wow. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. That, and so then, how did you decide then from there to go into real estate? Um, wedding photography is drama-filled at times. Really? It is. <laughs> <laughs> the guests don't see the behind the scenes. You don't see the arguments and that. And it's not every wedding, but there was one wedding in particular that I was like, I don't think I enjoy this anymore. The... It was the groom's mother wishing death on the bride's father during the reception. And I was like, I'm out. This just isn't for me. It took me a couple of years. I finished the weddings that I had already contracted to do, but I found no joy in it. So I did not stay with it. Okay. So did you get pictures of that whole scene? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I asked my side shooter, I said, can you just... And like, no, nah, I'm not having any part of that. <laughs> so. that. That's, it's, I guess it's such an emotional time. So you got it, you did that, and, and it probably gave you a lot, you probably learned a lot that helps you in your real estate career from that. I did. Um, attention to detail. Prior to photography, I worked in the medical field for 15 years. Not documented, not done. So I brought that, I brought what I learned in photography into real estate. And it's just a people business, working with people, getting to know them, getting to make them feel comfortable while working with you so they know it's about them, not about the paycheck. Yeah, and I would think that dealing with the, the drama is really helpful to dealing with the, all the emotions that go in when, when somebody's buying a house or selling a house. Yes, yeah. Um, there have been times where I've had clients say, oh, this is horrible. We're never going to get it. And I'm like, no, it, it'll work out. And you learn that from weddings. When you're with a couple who the family, maybe the parents split, so and it wasn't amicable, sometimes that gets brought into the wedding. So it's just learning how to work with these people and try and make them focus on what we're doing right now. Let's not worry about anything outside of this moment right now. So it's been very helpful. So what actually made you choose the real estate field? My husband thought it would be a good idea. He also thought photography would be a good idea. So, um, <laughs> but I was um, doing weddings, that's weekends. And I came from a background where I was working 45 to 60 hours a week. And then when you're just working weekends, like, what do I do with my time? And he said, why don't you try real estate? You can work that in with what you're doing. Um, so I did. And here I am 17 years later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, husbands will have to be right for one thing in your life. 
marrying yes. the right person, and that is it. They don't have to worry about anything else being right. right. <laughs> well, it sounds like he might have been right on both both accounts for at least a while. Yeah. Right? He, he has been. He has been yeah. very good on both. So. Yeah. so how did you get going in real estate? Because that can be such a struggle for so many people. Uh, well, I had the beauty of the wedding photography business. So as I was working with these clients prior to closing that business, I would, okay, we're going to do engagement pictures, and then I would just talk to them about their living situation. Are you guys buying a house? Have you already bought a house? What are you doing? So a handful of my first clients the first year were strictly photography clients. I also did open houses every weekend. My first year in the business, I got an award for the most open houses that year. That is a common theme yes. with top agents when they got going many of them would take any open house they could possibly get in right. many of them won awards for the volume of open houses because the value of an open house to get to get your business off the ground exactly and even when you're slow i've talked to agents who currently what are we going to do i don't have any business well if you have a listing do an open house doesn't guarantee that you're going to get a buyer but you're getting out in front of people that you wouldn't be getting in front of if you're sitting at home in front of the, your TV. Right. Yeah, you got to do something. Right. right. So you so to get going, you did open houses. You had you had the clientele that you were working with. It was a great clientele for buying a house. Right. But you also worked. Yes. And that's a big piece of it, correct? Right. Right. Um, there are unfortunately too many people who think. I've got my license, they're all gonna come knocking on my door and it doesn't happen that way. You get out of it what you put into it. So you have to be willing to work. And you know, there were times I did not start until my kids were in high school. So they hated me at that point. I didn't need to be home. <laughs> so I could be gone all the time and it was okay. Um, you but, both enjoyed it, them yes, and you. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. But I knew that if I was going to do what I wanted to for them and for my husband and I as we look to our future, it's going to take work. And I've always, I've worked since I was 15. So the whole sitting around waiting for it to come to me doesn't work for me. I have to go get it. I've got to be on the go constantly to make it happen. Yeah. And that's the best way. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people, I think, when you're ex either slowed down or you're new into the business, it, it's not something that you sit there and people just come to you. You have to go to them and you have to go find them. And that's a that's something that we really, I think people, a lot of people need to realize, especially, I think it's even harder maybe sometimes for the people that have been going, everything's going along great, and then it slows down to go back to the basics that you have to do. Right. Because you've, you've kind of gone past that, but not really. Right. And my philosophy is you continue with those basics. You may not do them as much as you had in the past. So I, I don't think, no, maybe I did one or two open houses last year. I can promise you I did no open houses in 21. Right. Didn't need to. Right. Couldn't even get back to the office before you had an offer. Right. Um, but the end of last year, I started doing them again. I've done them this year on my listings um, because there's uncertainty with the buyers. You know, do we do this now? Do we not? What about the interest rates? So if you can at least get them in the house, even if they have not chosen an agent or they have an agent, but they're not ready to go because they're afraid of the mortgage rates, get them in and let them fall in love let them talk to their lender and make an offer. Yeah. So let's say, I know people are, are afraid of the rates. I think they're getting used to it a little bit, but yeah. they're still afraid, even though it's so, it's so interesting to me how we are that we only look at what just happened, right. right? If you look at time, you would realize that rates are actually very good, but it does affect what the payment is. It does affect a lot, a lot. But, if you can afford to buy today, the interest rates don't keep you out. I actually think that this is probably one of the best times to buy that we've had in quite some time for a buyer. And, and I think it's because I believe rates are going to go down. 
but what it's really done is it's eliminated a lot of other people who aren't going to go in. So you don't have you don't have to make the incredible offers. I always, I found it interesting that people did not stop coming out and buying when they had to offer seventy thousand dollars over list price. Right. But when rate went up two percent, they thought that was oh I can't I can't do it. It I mean it it doesn't even near seventy thousand right. right. <laughs> dollars. Not clear thinking. They're just looking at that number and not thinking about the overall big picture and the fact that rates will most likely go down. You can refi. If you love that house, you don't have the competition you had. We still don't have good inventory. We're still limited. If you can afford it and you love it, buy it. Right. And and nobody can guarantee rates are going to go down. But the likelihood is, I've been in doing this a long time. You've been in real estate a long time. And yet we've seen higher rates and we've seen lower rates. Right. The one thing I can guarantee in rates, they will change. Yes, they right? will. Right. And where we are today, it is very likely they're going to go down. When we were in the, the threes and twos, mm -hmm. I didn't tell people they were probably going to go down. Right. The, the, there were people even then who said, I'm going to wait till they go even lower. It's like, well, it, that may never happen. Exactly. Right. right. I, I always found it interesting that people see rates going up and they'll lock at the highest rate possible because they're scared they're going to continue to go up. People will, very few people lock at the lowest rate mm -hmm. because they're scared they're going to miss out and it's going to go lower. Right. It's like, I tell people, just when you're comfortable, lock. Right. And sometimes that's just, it's comfort just that you don't have to worry about it anymore, right? Exactly. Yeah. One less thing on your plate, one less thing to stress about. And yeah. But it's a great time to buy. I just is. think it really Absolutely. is a great time. That's kind of the, the point to me. Um, I think that's important for people to know. Right. All right, Don. So with all this information you're giving us, so yes. how about this? How would somebody get a hold of you to either buy or sell? Um, they could call me on my cell phone, 317-459-5182, 317-459-5182. Or if you want to check out my website and see what I'm about, dawnwhalen.com. It's D-A-W-N-W-H-A-L-E-N. Com. It's amazing how bad people can spell. And I'm, I'm saying that because I'm a bad speller. <laughs> and the guy sitting next to me is just as bad a speller. Hey, so spell it check is a beautiful thing. It, it is. is. It's the best thing ever. It is until it, it misspells something for you or changes it to a word that you really did not expect. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't do a good job of proofreading. I don't or like it when that happens. Send that text yes. without, and then you're like... Oh, well, thankfully, it went to somebody who knows me and can appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They think I did it on purpose. Right. And to get a hold of Ian or I, go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. Or you can call 317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. And thanks for listening to Indies Real Estate Gurus. The gurus we interview share valuable insights. They reveal their strengths, personalities, and how they'll work for you. Well, we hardworking mortgage guys secure your best mortgage. Real estate gurus work hard, too. They avoid problems the amateurs don't see. They listen. They find unrealized opportunities. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, a real estate guru is a valuable asset. If you're even thinking of buying or selling a home, keep listening and definitely call one of Indy's real estate gurus. All right, Don. So let's take a little side step. Okay. So let's say I got to take away your phone. And you cannot work for 24 hours. What do we catch you out there doing for fun? Um, most likely either be at my house sleeping <laughs> <laughs> on the patio in the sun or um, potentially at our place in Madison with the grandkids just hanging out and enjoying the laid back, slower paced lifestyle. Yeah, because what we talked a little before is not only do you have real estate, what else do you do? Um, real estate, best wife ever. I don't know. If I'm <laughs> just going to say that. Yeah. Another husband. We got to get on. Now <laughs> tell us the truth. Yeah. Um, so I have two kids, um, and with their spouses, we have a total of four grandkids. Wow. Wow. Um, the grandkids, I try to attend every single event. So everything they have going, 
I'm going to, they live 40 to 45 minutes away. So sometimes it's long nights. I'm up at five. I may not get home until nine, but it's worth it to make those memories. Um, so I have that. I have a place in Madison. My husband and I bought when the rates were low. Investment property, and we got like 3.125 for an interest rate on an investment that's property. That's not available today. I know. <laughs> I know, but I mean, that's how low it was. And I was like, that's not bad for That's an incredible for an property. investment property. Yeah, so um, we bought that. We renovated it. We Airbnb it when we can't be there. Um, Chamber of Commerce for Beach Grove. I am currently the president of that organization. Been involved with them since 2007. And my favorite thing is Wayland's Heroes. Last June, we started a nonprofit to raise money to provide service dogs for veterans and first responders with PTSD. So... Well, I'll be doing one of those things. Yeah, well, I think the only job I didn't hear is she substitutes for the Easter Bunny. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Advisors Mortgage also does, they have a charity that they do with the service dogs. Yes. And we've done quite a few service dogs. I don't know how many, but because it's all out of New Jersey, but they've done lots of service dogs. They, they feel it's a really important um, charity and it is, does important work. It absolutely um i've got several clients who are military veterans who have suffered from ptsd one of my clients had introduced me to herman his service dog that was the first one i'd ever met and about a year ago i was at an event and learned about how to be a better realtor for military personnel and then learned about the service dogs and the impact they have and i was like I can do that. I can raise money for that. And I've got a very good board that works with me. We raised $25,000 last year in two months and wow. presented our first dog. We're going for three this year. And that's the thing. It's These dogs are expensive because yes. it's like expensive to train. Right. right. So it's not just an easy thing, yeah. right? It's expensive. And, and, it's, and there's so many people who need it that it's very valuable. And I mean, who better than our veterans, right? Exactly. It's, exactly. That's important. And so I've made a commitment with each of my sales, a portion of my commission goes to this foundation so that we can help as many veterans as possible. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be doing what we do. Yeah. All right. And then, hey, just for that, if you want to work with her and this organization, what's a good number? Uh, 317-459-5182. Again, 317-459-5182. That's all. All right. So uh, I know your work with the Whaling Group, which is <laughs> your group. So now I know that's with FC Tucker. Did you start with FC Tucker or did you start somewhere else and then transition over or how did so I've been a little bit of everywhere. <laughs> when I got in the business, my first brokerage was FC Tucker. So I was there two and a half years, uh, spent about two and a half at Keller Williams, and then went to Remax on the south side. And I was there for just about five years. And our managing broker there retired, and I had always wanted to start a team. And I was like, I'm not going to just start a team. I'm going to start my own brokerage. And I took, had he not retired, I wouldn't have left. But that was an open door. Go after what you want. So I did. I was independent from 15 until 19 when Tucker recruited me back. And while I loved being independent, the resources I have at Tucker, the fact that I don't have to do the 1099s every year. I can tell them this is how much you pay my team members per transaction. The technology and the support, it's everything I need to keep me happy. Yeah, it's a lot to run your own business. It is. And, and you, you're a lot of times better off spending it doing your business and, and being able to do your charity work and help others, that you, all the things that you do, Absolutely. and not deal, not dealing with the other other items. So that's that's really helpful, I would guess. So what does your team look like? Um, so currently it's myself and I have one other agent who works with me. He actually is a former client. When he moved to Indy in 2007, I sold he and his wife a house and he got his license 
uh, maybe 10 years or so okay. ago and he came to work with me in 2018. Okay. Um, so we've been working together, um, looking to hire additional team members. Um, I've had probably since 2015, 14 or 15 different ones. And as people grow and change, it just, if it's not a good fit, it's better to part ways and move on. So we've done that a few times. And now I'm just looking for people who have the same beliefs that I do, that it's about the client, not the paycheck, not the price point, because you don't know who they know. Right. So. Yeah. And is there, it really is. It's always about the client. So are you looking to hire uh, just additional real estate agents on your team or is there anybody else you're looking um, right now additional real estate agents um, with being at tucker i have support with marketing um, our front desk staff they're amazing i can ask them to do things for me they will do that um, the only thing i'm lacking on right now is social media because there's only so much time in the day and i'm not creative so it's like I can try and put something up, but it may or may not be good. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so right now, I think once I get that core group of agents that we all work together and we can collaborate and cover one another, um, then the next step would be to hire somebody to kind of manage our transactions. I had that in the past, um, didn't really work out. Agents didn't take advantage of it. They wanted to continue to do it themselves. So, well, we can do it a little different this time yeah. around. Agents are a lot like loan officers. Yeah. We don't. We tend not to want to let go. Right. I learned to let go, and it makes it a lot easier when you can have somebody else do the time-consuming things that mm -hmm. actually they can do extremely well, maybe even better than you do them. Right. Right? right. And you can concentrate on taking care of your clients and and finding more clients. Right, being in front of the people instead of in front of the computer. Right, yeah, makes a big difference. No, let's just sit in front of a computer. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you made, I mean, I think a lot of people do struggle, especially people aren't used to social media, like the young, younger generation is growing up with it, uh, because, I, well, like, Rick and I, we're not the most creative people. I mean, he's like, oh, can you can you uh, make a great paragraph for this, blah, blah, blah. I can sum that up in two words. You want me to do that? Yeah, that's, that's as easy as I can do it. I'm straight to the point. But creativity, I think that's what I've struggled with. And right. Right, how do I, if I post something, I want something actually people want to read or right. uh, to look at, not just, hey, here's two words. Have a nice day. <laughs> I don't have that problem. I just hired Raquel. Uh, see, <laughs> you found the to, you found the solution. For me. Yeah, she's yeah. creative. Yeah, yeah creative is not my thing. I'm not sure how I accomplished what I did in photography because that was easy. But when it comes to putting something in print that you're going to put out there, uh, that hasn't really worked well for me. So. so what is, I know you said you look for somebody when you're hiring somebody, you look for, you want them to take care of the customer, mm -hmm. and which is by far the most important thing in customer service period right. uh, but is there anything like personality or something like that that you looked for um, so I've heard people say that when they refer to a client or a potential client they have a healthy budget is that really what we're looking for no we need to know about the people we need to be available for our people uh, we need to care about what they need and what they want. So looking for someone, I want someone who has the desire to want to help people. Um, yeah, we're doing this to earn a living, but we shouldn't be earning a living at the cost of our integrity. And if we're pushing people to buy something just so we can get a paycheck, then we're not a good fit. It needs to be somebody who really cares about what they're doing because this is the biggest purchase of someone's life, typically, most all the time. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's one of those things too. If you if all if if all you care about is the transaction, you may get the transaction, but you won't build a business. Right. If you want to build a business, 
you have to forget about each trans transaction as being like, I have to make, you know, I have to sell them on this or do this. Almost everyone we've talked to, it's, they don't see this as a sales career. They really see it more as a relationship building right. job. And, and then not even a job, it's a career of re, you build relationships, you take care of people. And if you do that, you not only get repeat business, you get referral business. Right. right. And you build a business, right? Yes. And you want to stay in front of your people. It can't be, oh, we've closed and then a year later you send an anniversary card. Um, I want to say probably 90% of the people that I have had a transaction with, they get a card or a text or something from me at least once a quarter. If not more often, some people... Because you spend so much time with them, they become friends. Right. And there are some people who, they see me more than they want to because they bought a house <laughs> yeah. with me and now I can't, they can't get me out of their life. <laughs> yeah. so. Somebody made a point to me and they were like, for these people that are just there to sell the deal and then be done. Mm -hmm. He goes, if you look at it a different way, if you look at each mm -hmm. client as, look, they're, they're my way for 30 homes. And I, and I was like, what do you mean by that? And he goes, so you take it as they're the first ones, but I got to keep working them because they got 29 more people. They need to refer me, buy another house or something. I'm like, I didn't think about that. So that keeps your relationship going because you're thinking about it. And then four or five years down the road, you're, you don't even realize all you did was build a relationship. Exactly. And you took that out of the, uh, the numbers out and you just, then your whole business is built off of, hey, just continue follow up, staying in front, just Checking in and see how everything's going. Yeah. And we, I want to say last year, I started a Platinum Partner Club. So I went through all my database and looked at everyone I have worked with. Um, some Anyone who either they themselves or a direct referral from them that I had closed 12 or more transactions with that family or their referral, uh, every month they get something fun for me on their doorstep and it's a little bit of money but it's okay because and i try really hard to not make it salesy they'll have my card so they know it's for me but it's not real estate related this month they're going to get a summer survival basket well june a summer survival basket if they have kids there's going to be some kids things in there um, popsicles for the kids adult popsicles for the adults. <laughs> Don't mix them up, please. <laughs> Correct. I will have uh, ribbon around, what's what. But just trying to, you know, let them know that I do appreciate what they've done in their loyalty because there are times it's hard to find that loyalty in yes. this business. Then there is. So what would you say your superpower or superpowers are? Um, I will have to say... According to one of my former team members, I have a very calming effect when I have to explain to somebody why something is not going to go the way they think it should. Um, that never happens in real estate. Never, <laughs> never. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? When if I, she goes, if you talk to him that way, he probably wants to come work for, for us. I'm like, no, I don't think he does. But... You know, there are situations, younger agents, newer, younger in the business agents, maybe they haven't been educated on how timelines work. And this, that was an example we had, you know, they thought that this inspection time frame, well, we had 14 days, but we had an additional 10 if we needed it. Well, you had to ask for that in writing. And they hadn't asked for it in writing, so they didn't get what they wanted. Um, and he's like, I have been in this business for three years, and no one has ever explained it to me that way. And I was like, no. And I said, well, um, do you mind me asking what you think about the industry right now? And he was mad because he had never <laughs> yeah, learned yeah. that. And I said, no, not about that. He goes, no. He goes, you don't understand. You took the time to explain it to me. And not make me feel stupid, and the people I work for have it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so, I mean, I just, I I don't want to make people feel stupid. Right. Because I feel stupid all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody needed, wanted to get a hold of you for 
real estate or for your um, what is the the Wayland's Heroes. Wayland's Heroes. You think I can remember Heroes? That's okay. Um, how, how what's the best way to contact you? That is 317-459-5182, 317-459-5182, or go to my website, dawnwhalen.com, D-A-W-N-W-H-A-L-E-N.com. And to get a hold of Ian or I, go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com, 4317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. All right, so now we'll get into the question of the week. And the question of the week is sponsored by, hey, Rick and I, the hardworking mortgage guys. Well, we believe in helping and supporting you and your realtor by sending constant updates to the loan process. We don't like the living in a black hole, so we're not going to let you live in one either. Uh, contact us today at hardworkingmortgageguys.com. All right, so here's a tough question. Okay. And she listens to all of our shows, so she already knows what the question is. What was your first car? It was a 1978 Ford F-150 four-wheel drive. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was blue. Um, I had it three months before I blew the engine in it, and then my parents made me pay to have that engine replaced. So, oh, why would so you, you blow the, the engine? <laughs> well, I smelled coolant, but I didn't think anything of it. And, yeah. So you learn, not if you smell it, you better stop and, oh. and have it checked out. I did, and that's how I met my husband, actually. Really? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, see? Yeah. It was fate. It was. It was. So, you know, when, I don't even remember what year it was, but I smelled coolant in the vehicle I was driving at that point, and my husband was a manager at Midas Shop, and my brother worked there. So I took my blazer, and I'm like, hey, I can't go through what I went through when we were growing up. Can you check this out? And... My husband started talking to me, and we got home. My kids were like, he was hitting on you. I'm like, no, he wasn't, because I'm oblivious to anything. <laughs> and my brother came over for Thanksgiving later that night, and he's like, hey, my boss was asking about you. He wants your number. I'm like, okay, whatever. So, <laughs> and here we are. Yeah. <laughs> so, you yes. still haven't given him your number. No, I have not. I have not. So, Yeah, I think that we would be pe- doing people a really good service if we let everybody know. If you have a first-time driver, they're probably going to blow the engine. Because I, how many people have been on here and they've blown up their motors? Yep. I mean, uh, yeah. quite a few. It's just, I think the education, we teach kids, and you you know more about this than I do. My kids, if they I find them in the driver's seat, I yell at them. Uh, but you teach them how to drive and all the safety precautions. But when we went, when they first got in it, did you go through every warning light? What's this? What's that? Hey, do you notice that smell? Yeah, it doesn't smell like anything. My point exactly. You smell something, you stop. Right. But we don't go through all those those little tidbits. The nice thing is I hear all the horror stories, so hopefully I get to, I get to teach my kids and see how that goes. Probably won't go well, but we'll see what happens. They may listen. <laughs> they may not. I... Because of that experience, I made sure both my kids, when they started driving, I explained it all. I bought their cars. They were responsible for repairs, so they knew what they had to do if they didn't want to pay big money. Yeah. yeah my I, my kids, I had three boys, and none of them blew up a car, never, you know, anything like that. They did other things. They never, blew up a, never blew up a motor. Other things I didn't think about, you know, only the motor. I know you got a question you want to ask. Yes. I can see you're dying to I'm it. always dying to ask questions. I know questions. you are. Go ahead. All right. What do you think your most memorable deal was? Oh, let's see. Um, my children would expect me to say selling their childhood home and helping them buy their first homes, which, okay, I've said that. Um, <laughs> but my most memorable one was from... Ten years ago, on Friday, actually, um, young lady, she bought a home. It was not a high-dollar home at all, um, but she broke a cycle of, she graduated high school, she was in college, um, set to graduate college, and bought her first home and did not rent, so she broke all of these different cycles that she and her family had and so that is my most memorable one. Um, 
I cried that day. I think we all did because it was just so cool to see her accomplish all of these things. And the deck was stacked against her and she was just like, nope, I'm knocking that one out of the way and making it happen. So, Are you, are you still in contact with her? Unfortunately, she passed away oh, okay. two years after. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. And she was 25 when she passed away in her sleep. Oh, wow. Yeah, she was very young, but her I talk with her husband. I stay in contact with him. Um, they had got married not too long after she bought the house, and I was the first one he called when she passed away. Wow. He was like, I don't know what to do. You can call somebody else. I mean, I'll help you with the house, but I don't know what to tell you from this. Right. So. That's awful. Yeah. That ruined my next question. Well, Goodness. Go ahead. I'm still going to ask it because you never know. Right. So, because she was the first one and she got to set an example. So, did her any of her family members then become the next one, do you know? Um, not yet, they haven't. I actually am working with one of her sisters. We're getting her where she needs to be credit wise so she can be the next one. That's awesome. So, that's yeah. that's what I like to see. Yeah. And I was hoping it didn't end the, your story in the way it did because just to see the family say, wow, what, look what she's done. Maybe we should be doing that too, yeah. especially siblings. It's harder for parents sometimes, right. uh, but when siblings see other siblings, you own that home. And, uh, yeah. I want to own my home too, sort of deal. So. Yeah. And it just, it's probably the best closing ever. I mean, I have a lot of memorable ones, but that one I'll never forget because she fought to get what she wanted and she did it. So That's awesome. So what would you say are some of the biggest misconceptions of being a real estate agent? It's easy. It's I not mean, easy? No, no, it's not. No. Um, I... And I don't understand. Um, I've talked with agents who they get in because they like to show homes. They think it's fun. And when I say, here's a lead, oh, I have to talk to people. I don't know how to vet them. Well, that's part of it. So you have to be able to communicate with people. Um, you can't be, this sounds weird coming from me. I was very shy and introverted growing up. Getting into real estate, I had to bring myself out of that. It's exhausting. I will go home and just pass out because I've had the people all day. But you have to do that. You have to talk to people. You have to let people know what you're doing because they don't know if you don't tell them. Right. So um, talking with people, putting the work in, and that's the biggest thing if your office um offers trainings, you should take advantage of that. Just because you can find something online doesn't necessarily mean it applies to our market. So you should really, instead of watching HGTV or sell, does sell it like Sir Hant? Is that even a show or is that just his book? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody had said something about that. And I'm like, that's in New York and we're not New York. So I don't know what you can learn off of that. So um, it's not what you see on TV. It's a lot of hard work and it's nights and weekends sometimes because we have to be available when our people are available. Um, and if you want a nine to five job, you either need to have a lot of years in the business or a different career because this isn't nine to five. Or you better be willing to give up a, a lot of people you're going to work with right? <laughs> right. <laughs> because you, because you want to control that, that piece. So right. that's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Um, I, I know I've talked to so many agents and it's probably one of the biggest hard. It's, it's one of the biggest misconceptions when people come into the business, they think I can control my time. Right. And you can, as long as you're willing to work all the time. Exactly. <laughs> and you can set boundaries and say, okay, so I just recently, I have set those boundaries that I'm not going to work Sundays unless I absolutely have to, because that's the only day my husband is off and we have one day a week. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, I want to say the last, probably in the last two months, I have worked six Sundays 
He's been my driver. I just sit in the passenger seat and work, so he gets to spend time with me. I'm on my laptop, so I don't see how he's driving, so we're good. That, well, yeah, that's good. Yep. Um, but here's the nice thing is, but what you said was, up until recently, you worked Sundays. So even when you first start, you got to put that work in. Yes. And you, um, so you may not be able to decide everything. Now, once you get going, once you form a team, because there are some people that form a team and be like, all right, well, all right, you'll do open houses for us. Mm -hmm. And basically, they still pay them whatever they do. But, all right, well, that frees that, uh, that agent up. So they don't have to show every single weekend, uh, especially if you have young kids in sports and stuff like that. Uh, so there are ways. But when you first get in, there is no ways. No. It's it's 24-7. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, you have to return phone calls. I have had agents that they called me and left a message or they inquired about um, a listing. What do I do? Call them. Call them back. I don't know. That other, other than that, I don't know what you could possibly do. Right. Ignore right. them? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the other option. <laughs> so, and it's just, you know, you, you want to, people need to know that you can't get your, you could get your license and business fall into your lap, but that's not reality. It's you get your license and you have to put the work in to have the business, to grow the business, because it's inexpensive. The barrier to entry is very low. Um, so I feel like a lot of people think, well, I'll just hang on to my license and maybe something will happen. But you also have to stay up to date on what's going on with the changes in the listing contracts, changes in the purchase agreements, changes in financing, talk to your lenders. You have to know all of this stuff. It can't be oh, I can do this as a side hustle because that's where people get into trouble, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of time, and it's it's amazing to me how many people don't realize that when, because I guess because of the TV, they watch it right. on TV and they think that it's not hard and it's easy to do. But even, like you said, you can go get your license, but if you don't tell anybody what you're doing, you will not get any business because nobody can know, uh, just somehow know by osmosis that you are a real estate agent. You got to get it out there. And not only do you have to get it out there, they have to remember that's what you do. So when you first start, if they know you as a school teacher, they're going to think of you as a mortgage or as a, as a real estate agent or a mortgage person until <laughs> you make sure you get it out there. You know, they, right. you beat it into their heads right. nicely, but you, you keep letting them know, right? You stay in front of them. Yeah. You, I mean, you could, at one point, I had my forerunner was completely wrapped with my logo and my phone number and my website. And I was like, well, they got to know. And that helped a little bit in my old neighborhood. I mean, I had, I sold probably eight or nine houses in my old neighborhood uh, before moving and some of it was neighbors that I hadn't really talked to, but they saw my forerunner in the driveway all the time. Okay. So. A rolling billboard. Exactly. Yeah. I don't do that anymore because my driving is, the older I get, the worse it gets. So we're not going to let people know how to reach me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to know that. Yeah. 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 Cause, Cause that can be a negative. It can be. Yeah. All right, here's all you got to do now. With selfies becoming so popular, just tattoo on your forehead, I am a realtor. <laughs> exactly. We can do that. I wouldn't do that. I, Ian's, Ian's ideas on marketing aren't always the best, and that's one of the ones I would throw in not very good. Well, no, because yours would have to say, I am a mortgage Yeah, advisor. see? Come on. Not, you got to use it. Come and, on. And my forehead's not that big. <laughs> I mean, if I, if I wrote all that out there, we'd be able to be read. You know, couldn't read it. And I, I noticed something when you look at Ian. Does he have that written across his forehead? I can't see no. that far. Hey, on my pictures it does because I just go copy paste. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's okay. But you wouldn't want to tattoo it. That, that's permanent. I would not recommend that. So, what's your favorite part of the job? Um, it's the people I meet. Um, I have met so many people that have become friends, um, and they include me in family events. There is an older couple in 2012. I met them. They moved down here from 
I cannot remember, northern Indiana, um, I want to say Warsaw maybe, um, but they moved down here and they adopted me as their daughter. And every year at Christmas, they bring me homemade chocolate chip cookies. Um, that sounds terrible. I know. No. Are they adopting more people? Because, <laughs> um, but they—they um, they are just the kindest people I know. And I'm like, you don't have to do that. No, you helped us because I helped them buy a house, and then they called me a couple of years later. They're like, you're going to think we're crazy, but we fell down the steps, so we need to sell this one and get a ranch. I'm like, okay, so we did that. Um, but it's just. The relationships that you build and the people, um, I've got one family that I have helped them with probably 12 or 13 properties since 2008, and I am their family realtor. And so it's just building those relationships because in my previous careers, I mean, I might still talk, and I do still talk to some of my former bridal couples. Um, I don't talk to anybody from my days in the medical field, but the real estate, those people, you spend so much time with them and you get to know right. them and it just, it's a good thing. Yeah. So if anybody would like to get a hold of you for any real estate needs or for your charity. They can call me at 317-459-5182, uh, 317-459-5182, or visit my website, dawnwhalen.com, D-A-W-N-W-H-A-L-E-N.com. And to get a hold of Ian or I, it's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com, or you can call 317-65, uh, uh, no, don't call that number, 317-672-1938. <laughs> that was going to be Ian's cell phone, you know, home, home line, 317-672-1938. And please follow us for more Indies Real Estate Gurus. It's funny you say home line. My I generation never, doesn't have home lines. I sir. know. <laughs> I don't have a home line. I got rid of it years ago. All right. Uh, Don, we'd like to thank you for coming in. It's been a pleasure having you on our show today. Thank you so much. I enjoyed meeting you guys and talking with you. We appreciate it. And reminder, if you have any friends, family, or coworkers looking to buy, sell, refinance, contact us. We'll be more than happy to help you. Branch NMLS number 33041. Rick NMLS number 6645890. Ian Arnold's NMLS number is 1995469. Equal housing opportunity. Some restrictions apply.